Welcome to Wonderland Weekly, hosted by Toronto Ty. Now sit back and have a wonderful week. Hey everybody, Toronto Ty here. I want to say up front, I have no delusions about this actually happening, and am quite confident the park will remain closed until the spring, making what was going to be Wonderland's shortest off-season turn into its longest. However, my mind often starts contemplating if an idea I have is even feasible, leading me to consider what the Toronto Zoo and some other theme parks have decided to do. And so, here is my idea as to what a drive through winter event would have looked like at Canada's Wonderland. We're going to start at the south end of the parking lot through the newly fenced-in area. Perfect spot for checking tickets and avoids the issues with the park's front gate not being suitable for vehicles. The fun starts right away as you head along the access road under Behemoth, entering the park proper through the gate next to Behemoth Station, then between the large elevated letters of the ride name. Head past Sledgehammer and Cyclone, which can be decorated for the event, then a tight squeeze through here before passing a great opportunity for a set piece in the t-shirt place. Take in Windseeker, string lights cascading down to simulate a Christmas tree, before heading into Frontier Canada. Yukon Strikers Station and Water Tower offer plenty of options for decoration, as does the Helix. Perhaps a sleigh guided by Saint Nick can be perched here for you to drive underneath? Next is a decently sized plot of grass for another set piece, before heading into the most wooded pathway of the event branches full of lights would create a beautiful sight to drive by. I'm imagining the little buildings from Winterfest can be placed here, helping cars navigate the tight turn toward yet another set piece on this small plot of grass. As we head through International Festival, everything will look fairly similar to last year's Winterfest. You'll notice I had to avoid the Windseeker Hill, which would be terrible for drivers in the winter as well as the entire kids' park due to the tight turns of the winding path and, more importantly, the rainbow bridge and final turn toward the bat. Speaking of bridges, this is the one area I'm especially concerned with, but it comes with the park's fantastic terrain. The only other option would be going under Vortex's first drop and coming down the other side of Wonder Mountain, where a few prominent rocks make the downhill path a little narrower than I'd like. Now we get to Front Gate, offering a perfect view of Wonder Mountain in all its wintry glory. Thankfully, the area here is large enough to allow slower vehicles to be passed, though I think it would also be a good idea to have security on hand to ensure people aren't getting out of their cars for a selfie. Next up is heading through the Castle Gate and past Canterbury Theatre, both decorated as they were for Winterfest. Arthur's Bay offers one final image from last year's Winterfest, before heading through this access gate next to the washrooms. Some final farewell set pieces can be placed along the grass field next to Dragonfire for your viewing pleasure as you pass under Leviathan and head out through the security post here. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed dreaming it up. Wonderland clearly wasn't made for vehicles, but I do think the park could have made it work with enough advance notice about being unable to open this year. Let me know your thoughts below, comment about anything I could or should have envisioned differently, and tell me how many times you would go to a winter drive through event at Wonderland. Hopefully you're all keeping well and looking forward to the start of Wonderland's 40th season and its 40th anniversary next year. And with that, until next time, have a good one!